Hi there, this is Sarah Lister from Sheffield Digital and today I'm interviewing Elle Hill about her job as an infrastructure engineer at TES. What would you say are the main skills and tasks involved in your job? For me, I think it's definitely three words come to mind. It's patient, determination and troubleshooting. Part of being an engineer is you've got to be um, open to learning something new every day. A lot of the problems sometimes what arise are things that you may not know about, you may not have seen before. Um, you've got a lot of users who tend to come up with, like I said, issues that you've not seen. They've done something and you think, well, oh, how have you done that? So generally when it comes to my level, it means that the guys on service desk might need more assistance with it or maybe they need a bit more of a, a higher level. Um, it might be a change, it might need a change or you know, just something a little bit more what might need doing to um, help them along. So in addition to that, I think it's important you should be really good at managing managing your time and being able to communicate well with teams. I talk to everybody in the business. I get to talk to everybody from sales, fire, everybody, because everybody needs IT. Um, we have a lot of projects that help different sides of the business. So it's really keen to be able to work with a lot of people, communicate effectively and being able to deliver the products on time and also being able to communicate to find issues, best ways of doing stuff. Excellent. And how, how did you progress from being a desktop support analyst to infrastructure engineer within the business? So um, originally I joined TES so about 18 months ago. Um, I, I directly used to work for school, so it used to be on site for primary schools and secondary schools. I've done that a lot through my career. Um, I kind of kept getting to a sticking point though with schools, unfortunately, being on site, is um, that I was getting stuck to the same technologies. So I really enjoy working for schools. Um, it's a really great environment. And then when the job came up at TES, I thought this is a good environment to still work for schools, not as quite directly, but indirectly, and still do something what can enrich education. So um, I applied for a desktop role and um, sound exactly where I wanted to go. I was doing a bit more hands-on stuff, but I worked closely with the infrastructure team because I had that kind of bit of background of being on the infrastructure, but I never quite got the progression to go there. I know that's I know exactly that's where I wanted to go. When I joined TES about six months in, I said, I want to be on the infrastructure team. I used to work closely with one of the guys who now I have his job, it's funny it is. So he left on to somewhere new. Uh, and I thought, okay, this is a good opportunity for me to apply for a job and see where I get. I, I knew I was maybe a little bit underqualified. I didn't have all the skills that they needed, but I thought I'll have a go um, and, see, and see where I get on. So I was lucky enough that um, they identified me as good for the role and that um, offered me a little bit of development to get where I am now. So Brilliant. And what has the additional training and support specifically helped you with? Um, one of the key things that helped me develop in TES is the knowledge base on my team. We have such a, a variety of knowledge, um, like my boss um, has lots of knowledge for TES and how lots of things can work, but we have a lot of opportunities for self-learn. And I think it's one of the most important, like, so there'll be projects coming along and we might not necessarily have that skill set, but you have the opportunity to go and learn about that and become um, an SME in that area. And which parts of your job do you in, would you say you enjoy the most it's generally um when you when i get to implement a solution which affects a lot of people like making stuff a little bit easier and i really enjoy mentoring like my fellow it members we have like i said we have such a, a vast knowledge between the team but it's, it's really nice to be able to pass down knowledge especially if i learn something and i think well actually if i can tell the guys on the service desk how to do that it can improve how quickly they do processes as well so that's the main thing i enjoy oh and also how fast pace it is i never find like a day is the same you could walk in one morning and something's completely changed you need to fix a new um fix something new or find a new solution for something or suddenly somebody might say I want to do this so it, I like how it changes every day. How did you first get into working in IT? Where did this all begin? So when I was 16 uh, I remember thinking oh gosh where what, where do I want to go in my career? I have absolutely no idea. So my dad um, was a IT engineer at the time. So we used to spend a lot of time building computers and taking bits apart. And that was kind of like our little hobby. And my dad just said to me, well, why don't you go in IT? You're pretty, pretty good at it. And so I thought, oh, 
maybe I did so I, I got an apprenticeship and just went on from there and 14 years later I'm still here so so what was your experience like of the apprenticeship really good I think the main, like for IT it's really good to get hands-on experience I think it can be quite hard and daunting when you're reading a lot of like um you know doing courses and that on IT and I think starting as an apprenticeship and be able to do a lot of hands-on and would you say that that was a good starting point to 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 go with at the start of your career yes I definitely think hands-on experience it has really helped it's been able to visualize it's been able to visualize problems like even now as like as I've moved up through from like first second line now a third line I still have that foundation of knowledge which I learn on site and it's just it's just being able you see so many different problems this is when you're hands-on and that's I think that's the best way to learn as you go forward. Why does the education sector particularly appeal to you? I think it's because I'm from a school background so that I've worked for secondaries, prim- um, the se- secondary primary schools all around South Yorkshire. I spent four years like at secondary school which I really enjoyed and it's really it's just such a nice environment and um, it's nice to be able to work where you, you know, you're supporting teaching and learning and you're helping enrich, enrich kids and it all adds up. Even if you just support staff, all them little help adds up. It's like, it was nice when um, it was, I used to have kids who used to be really interested in IT. So they'd come around to the my IT office and it was really nice to take them through building computers and answering geeky questions. And, but little moments like that remind you why you want to work in education. What's it like working for TES in terms of the team you work in, the opportunities available to you and the work culture? My team and the IT ops, we're really a really transparent team. We don't hide knowledge from each other. Um, we're, it's really easy to go up to each other and just say, can I have five minutes with this? Um, the guys, and we're, more than ha- we're more than happy. We've got like a little learning channel between us. If somebody in the team goes, oh, I don't know what this is. And they can chuck something in there, say, I want to learn about this. And then one of us who who's ever confident in that subject, I say, yeah, okay, let's book something in. And it's really good because we do take a lot of time. And that's the culture we have to, to learn each other. No one hides knowledge from each other. We're always sharing. It doesn't matter what level you are. And if you want to learn, then we do help each other out. And with Tez, I find that if you do hard work, you do get recognised. We have like an above and beyond um, awards where... Um, your team members can vote for you and you don't always know it's kind of and then you end up coming and you have a yeah at the end of the email you get a hundred pound like voucher as well just for it could be that you've helped a certain team or you've done something that loads of people have just thought oh thanks for that it, it's quite a nice you do get rewarded which is nice and do you have opportunities to travel i think you mentioned to me that you've been to scotland we've got opportunities we're allowed to travel between offices because all our because all our colleagues are in different, so half of my team are based down in London, so we get down to go to London more or less once a month, um, which is nice, but it says we do get to get about, which is a nice change of scenery. <laughs> is it quite a big team that you work within? So my team on the infrastructure, there's there's four of us, mm-hmm. but um, in general, like the service desk, there are six of them now, so there's only about, there's about 10 of 11 of us in the whole IT team. If someone is looking to get into a similar role as you, what approaches or opportunities do you think they should be exploring as a starting point? I think a good, strong IT support background would be good. Um, You need to get that strong foundation of knowledge. There are a lot of courses online that I think you can gain. At the moment, it depends exactly where you want to go in IT. If you want to concentrate on the infrastructure, I think it's good that you learn you get a good understanding of troubleshooting networking on-site experience which we've gone back before that on-site experience is an on-job on-the-job training just gives you a good foundation of knowledge thank you so much for a great interview Elle